Hey y'all, I'm Sean Keyes, producer, songwriter, musician. I've been blessed to work with some of gospel's best new artists. And uh, just to name a few, uh, people like Isabel Davis, James Mabel Jr., Kim Person, Titus Showers, and Keela Richardson, of course. And that's what we're here today to talk about. It was an extreme honor to produce and co-write Keela's new single, So Good. Thanks to GospelProducers.com, I'm here today to give y'all a breakdown of how the record was done. So shout out to Elena Mayberry and Adolphus Scotty Scott III for doing such an amazing job writing this one with me. I also want to thank Greg, Uncle G Lyons of Uncle G Records for the call. So basically, uh, I just want to talk about how the song came about conceptually. So um, Elena and I were trying to merge the genres of neo and gospel together without the song being so neo that it wasn't gospel. Um, so basically what we wanted to do was kind of merge those two, those two genres together. And um, so I started building the track um, and we started uh, kind of collabing off of each other with uh, the arrangement and the lyrics and uh, here's what we came up with. So thank you guys for tuning in. Let's jump into the session. So yeah, with this record, we really wanted to capture that whole neo soul meets gospel type of feel. So um, Elena and I were doing some writing sessions, coming together on a few records. And when this record came up, uh, she had some excellent ideas of how we wanted to arrange the background vocals and everything. So she came in to demo the record. We collabed on the writing process of it. I sent her the track first. She came in and um, and did the, the writing and, and both we both did the arranging and she demoed the record. And then we sent it out to Adolphus to do uh, the verses. And man, it, it I, I had no idea that this record would be, you know, as great as that, as it is. Uh, thank God for that. Um, but, you know, let's kind of dive into like, I'm going to talk about just the instrumentation, what I use for the record, um, different things, elements we use to try to capture that whole neo meets gospel kind of feel per, per se. So first thing I, I, I want to talk about is uh, the first thing you think about or what's the first thing you think about or, or what I think about uh, when I think about neo soul records. Uh, think about Rhodes. Think about Defender Rhodes. So um, that's what I started out with. Being a keyboard player, most of the time when I produce records, I start out with the keys. Um, if I don't if I don't get lyrics and the melody first, sometimes that'll that'll develop for me doing something on keys. So we're gonna start with with the roads. So this particular record, I wanted the roads to sound really gritty. I wanted to have like a grit to it. So uh, you'll hear some of that in here. So I'm gonna just play it from the intro, play a little bit of it, and and let y'all check it out. So here here's the roads. stop you know you can't have a neo soul record and you got roads and you can't have it panning back and forth that's classic so I, ha I had to make sure that that happened So that so that's the road. So secondly, you're thinking neo, and then you're thinking gospel. So the next thing came to mind. Okay, let's put organ in it. So of course I had to track B three on it. And uh, when I when I actually uh, had the intro, the intro was a little was a little different than this. It was slightly different than this. But when I brought in the organ, I said, man, it's probably a good idea to have the road start off with a lick and then brush the organ in. You know, that classic thing that you do at organ. That, wow. You know, so here's here's what that sounds like. And I'll keep the roads in, too, so you can kind of hear the, the the marriage between the two. Yeah. 
You know, so it, it's good to have that organ as a nice bed for the record to sit on. So I wanted to make sure that was kind of gritty like the roads as well, uh, just so it would have a nice fat bed to sit on. So, of course, you know, the next thing, uh, once we demoed, I, and I demoed everything out before I sent it out to my musicians, uh, I actually played drums on it, too, and sent it over to uh, my buddy John Stutz, who played drums on the record, brought him into the studio. And he did an excellent job, man, an excellent job on the record, uh, you know, and I wanted I wanted the record to not be so tight. I wanted it to, to feel kind of loose, you know, like a neo soul vibe is always if nothing's really down on like on the one every time I kind of wanted it to feel loose, but still keep uh, true to a gospel feel where it's just not super loose if that makes sense. So he, here's the drums along with uh, the other elements. We'll start a little bit further into the song, too. Drums came out really clean. I love the way these drums came out. Um, and what I did with this, and what I do with most of my drums most of the time, is I'll track um, uh, with a 14 mic setup. I know that sounds like a lot, but it's a lot of things that you need to capture when you're capturing drums. So I had a kick in, sub kick, and then I had the beater side mic too, which most people don't usually do, but I like to have those things independently so that my mixing engineer can blend those things in uh, to taste. And then, of course, you know, top and bottom on the snare, uh, three toms, two rack toms, floor tom, uh, hats, of course, um, uh, ride mic. I like to write, uh, to mic the ride as well, especially on a song like this when I know he was going to be using the ride a lot. Uh, so we mic the ride and then two overheads and then also room mics. I really feel like if you have a room that lends to a really nice sound with drums, you should definitely mic the room. So basically what I did was I took two mics, put them uh, away from the drums and turned them the opposite way, not facing the drums. So I can get most of the, the, the room and how it sounded in the room. Man, it, it, it came out it came out great. I, I'm really impressed with how the drums came out. And Stutz did a great job. Shout out to you, Stutz. Good job, bro. Uh, so next is, of course, uh, we can't have the drums without the bass, right? So uh, I called my guy. DJ Raymond, who is one of the, uh, I think one of the best bass players here in the city. And um, he's probably one of the only guys, there's a few, but he's one of the only guys that I really trust to track from home. Uh, Cause initially when I called him, he was on the road and um, he agreed that, you know, when he got back in, he would, he would, uh, he would knock it out. And I was like, yeah, cool. Um, so I had Stutz track to the demo bass and then just had uh, DJ do his part when he got back home. And man, he sent me something, I think in maybe two takes, he had it knocked out. So uh, here's, uh, here's uh, DJ on bass.
with, with any type of guitars, uh, bass, or, or guitar itself, tone is so important. And um, I love, you know, DJ's tone on this record. Uh, he sent me back a file that was really clean. You could hear the low end, but you could also hear the high end in the bass. You, you heard the mid range, the high end, and the low end on the bass. You know, um, I, I hate muddy sounding basses. It, it's, it, you know, you can't ever add what's not there. So um, shout out to DJ for tracking bass exceptionally well. So uh, after that, of course, so now you think about the next thing you got to have, or the next thing I thought the record needed was guitar. And uh, shout out to Max Bronstein, uh, who did guitars on this record. Man, I'm telling you, he killed it. Um, so I'm going to add in the guitars now and let you hear it, uh, what, what he did. Now, me with guitars, I kind of approach guitars a little different than most people. Uh, what I do is I like a lot of guitar parts on, on, on my productions. I like a lot of guitar parts. So basically what I did was, and what I always do is, I usually take one amp and I'll mic it. I'll mic the speakers, say if it has two speakers, I'll mic one speaker on axis of the speaker and I'll mic the other one off axis. So you get two different tones. You get a really fat, warm tone and then you get a, a little brighter tone and then you mix, mix them two together. So each one of, as you'll see here in the session, each one of my guitar tracks is an on-axis uh, feel, and one is an off-axis feel. So uh, that's what I do with the mics. I like to have them on-axis, off-axis for everything, even if it's clean, if it's if it's overdrive, whatever, just so I can have both of those and blend them in. Uh, so let's listen to a little bit of the guitar. We'll go down further in the song so you can hear some of the stuff that Max did. Shout out to Max. Great job, bro. Let's go a little bit further in the song. give you max by itself I, I i i just want y'all to hear the guitars by themselves i'm gonna take out the drums and the, and the roads and everything in the organ and let y'all hear max by itself of the song was very important too because I had instead of him playing a lot through the front of the song I had him just basically doing some chording and some fills and I love the way it married with the roads I'm going to play the beginning of the song with the roads and with uh Max on guitar I'll just let you hear that real quick I love the way that kind of came together So at this point, I'm thinking, you know, the track is really starting to, to, to come together and, you know, and, and it's starting to really feel like like a record. Um, so the next thing I thought about was, OK, you know, we pretty much have the shell of the song, the meat of the song down. So the next thing is auxiliary things. You know, you want to add the bells and the whistles, so to speak. I kind of felt like the record didn't really need a lot of that. So the aux stuff doesn't really come in until the bridge. And, and actually in the mix of the record, you really can't hear it. It's more of a feel thing. You have to kind of feel that it's there, if that makes sense. Uh, so I had them kind of not have it up in the mix. So you kind of, it's kind of like ear candy. You hear something's there. It's like, oh, wait, what is that? So here's the aux stuff that happens in the bridge of the song. It didn't really come in until the bridge. So uh, let me let you hear that. I, and, and the only thing I did for aux is bells, little bells, and a flute sound. So I'm gonna let you hear in context with the roads what happens at the at the uh, at the bridge of the song. You 
don't even hear that in the record. But when you hear everything together, it's something that you hear in the background that's kind of moving. You're like, what is that? And it kind of just, you know, it, it felt right. So I put it in to the record. So uh, the next thing I think was basically the icing on the cake as it pertains to the musical elements of the record. Uh, I called uh, uh, Tyrese Rolfe, which is like one of the best string arrangers in the industry right now, working with everybody right now. So shout out to Tyrese from uh, Memphis, Tennessee. I called him and and in his normal fashion, like always, one take knocked out the strings. And, you know, he does virtual string arrangements. But man, when I tell you these things sound so real, it, it's amazing. Uh, when I first started working with him on some of the records, I was I was blown away. I was like, man, there's no way, you know, it sounds as good, but it, but it does. So shout out to Tyrese for doing a great job on the record. Let's get into um, let's get into the bridge because he really did some really fantastic stuff towards the bridge on this record. So I'm gonna start there. I ain't even gonna do Tyrese like that. Let me turn off the roads. I want y'all to hear him by himself. <laughs> pretty dope and i played that section of the song because initially when dj tracked his bass the strings weren't there so once tyrese did this line i was like man that would be really dope if the bass player accented that line so i added i had dj go back hey man can you catch this for me real quick and it really did wonders to this bridge man it kind of lifted the bridge and, and brought it to another space. So let me, let me play that with, with DJ and uh, Tyrese doing that line. Man, that's just good playing right there. Man, that was awesome. So, uh, so now, um, Basically, the song I felt like was pretty much done at this point until <laughs> until we started doing vocals and it lifted to this spot at the end of the song that I just felt like there was something missing. I was like, man, I really need something else. So I called my guys, Ian, Travis and Chris, who, who does all my horn work for me. And at the end of the song. Um, I had them play these horn lines just to fatten up, to make it feel like something was something was building, something was happening and, and really make the, the last part of the song impactful. So what I did was I had those guys and they, they're they're another crew that can track from home. Uh, Travis has his own home setup and uh, they do really, really good tracking. Uh, so what I did was I had them come in and I um, had them play these little spots at the end of the song just to make it really fat and really big. So I'm going to put the roads and uh, let's put the roads and the bass back in just so you can hear it in context uh, at the end of the song. And it's, it, it really lifted the song to a whole nother level. Uh, so I'll play that.
No, I just felt like that really made the song at the end of, at the end of the record. I was like, man, that, that's it. It's perfect. Um, but of course, no record's complete without the vocals. So let's move to, you know, talking about some BGVs. So um, this particular record, um, I know we wanted, I knew we wanted to kind of capture the whole neo soul kind of thing. So I think this is kind of where we played more on that vibe than anything in the BGVs. So um, again, shout out to Elena for an, a, a dope arrangement of the BGVs. Uh, she's so real. So, uh, so uh, that's kind of how we came up with really making the song marry those two genres together. So uh, shout out to uh, Vernon Bird and Ashley Williams and Rayon Ramsey. Y'all did y'all good singing on this. Appreciate y'all. So here, here's some of the BGVs. He's been so good to me. And I thank you, Jesus. He's been so good to me. And I thank you, Lord. You know, when, when Elena did that, I was like, yeah, that's it. It's the perfect marriage between having the gospel three-fourths time and on the drums, but you're singing these vocals and they're totally off of the grid of what a regular gospel record would be. So I'm going to put the drums and and uh, and everything in, maybe the bass and the roads and uh, the percussion track, of course. Got to have a good old loop, right? So I'm going to put some of that in just so you can hear in context what it sounds like with the, the vocals and the music. I thought this was a, a genius idea. So let's play that again. your marriage between the whole neo soul vibe and the gospel vibe and i think it worked perfectly i think it worked perfectly um so of course uh let's get to the start of the show man keela richardson is probably one of the most talented singers i've ever worked with and she she sings stuff just so effortlessly I mean, it, it's crazy just how well she can sing. So she made my job kind of easy. I had to push her a lot <laughs> to make sure I got out of her what I needed. But the thing I want to highlight about her vocal was is this. Producers, always be sure to get more than what you need, especially when it comes to vocals, especially when it comes to lead vocals. Um, I had maybe 20 takes of her doing this song. And once we got to the end of the song, I kind of felt like something was missing at the very end of the song. So everybody that's heard the song, you hear at the end where, where Keela just goes off into this, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, whole thing at the end, right? So that initially wasn't even in the record. That was from another take in the song. And, uh, when Uncle G and I were talking about the record uh, before we were getting ready to send it to radio, he was like, man, uh, what you think about the end? I was like, man, I really feel like there's something missing at the end. We need to take the listeners to a whole nother level while this song is going out and just not let it in. So I was like, let me go back in and look to see if there's anything else uh, in the takes, which I knew I had some stuff because I had 20 takes, even though she killed it. That's my advice to, to producers. Like, even if your singer is killing it, get them to keep doing it again because there may be something that they do that you can use later. So 
Once we got to the end of the song, let me see. I'm gonna play. I'm gonna just play the whole record together and just um, get to the end right here and let you hear this. So this part at the end wasn't even there. We had to add this in later uh, before we sent it to mix um, from some of the other takes. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, see, none of that was there. The record ended differently. But uh, because I had a whole bunch of takes, I was able to go find that and put it in there. And uh, shout out to Keela. Man, killer job on the record. Uh, I'm grateful to God that the record's doing so well. You know, so that's basically it in a nutshell how it was done. Special shout out to um, my mixing engineer that makes this record, Marlon M.D. Stokes. Thank you so much for a great job in mixing. And my master engineer, Roger Willis, uh, man, awesome job, guys. Thank y'all for doing your, your good mixing and mastering, <laughs> as always. But, uh, you know, that's pretty much how we did it, man. I, I really, really love this record. I'm grateful for the, the opportunity I had to do it. And, uh, man, it, the record is really special to me. Uh, I'll just run a little bit more of it just so we can hear a little bit from it, uh, from maybe the verses into the bridge uh, with everything in way down and you rescued me and it don't stop there you keep showing your care and it's amazing to me so I will tell everybody you line just lifted the record to me and let's go to the very end so you can hear where those horns come in with everything but it's my own time Shout out to gospelproducers.com, man. Thank y'all for having me break down uh, this record by Keila Richardson. So good. Uh, it's available right now on all digital media outlets, man. Thank y'all. Blessings to you.